both mares are always waiting for me, which tells me that they're on some kind of internal schedule because they're ready to eat and be grain and be let out on the pasture. So that's what we're going to do right now. Bye, Ruby. Bye, Faith. Had something to say because I'm a little late coming out here this morning. So I have them on a um, horse feed right now that's it's a good um, mix of protein, fat, and fiber. Um, so it's an additional source of supplement. One mare is three and one mare is 23. So she gets a little extra pellet that has some additional protein and fat to it. The scoop is one pound, so they each get two scoops and then Kate gets a half a pound of this pellet stuff. Then she put on weight really good, giving her that. There's also this oil for horses that's really good for their digestion and coat and hooves. So I usually give them a few squirts of that. So I'm going to go in here and throw this in their buckets. Ruby, you need to get back. Sometimes she can be kind of rude because she just wants her stuff right now. Excuse me. Let's get in here. Pooped in the lean too. Somebody pooped in the lean too. Also, behavioral wise, grain is um, a high demand. You know, they love it and they'll fight over it and they'll steal each other's grain. So sometimes I just make sure that uh, Ruby's not going to come over here and grab Kate's grain. Um, yeah. Got a little problem here. She's eating her grain and sometimes spitting it in this. So I'm going to get that all out today. Usually, this is the area where I keep clean, so I always remove all the um, horse stuff from overnight every day. And if you um, keep picking up, um, the horse manure, you will avoid, you know, parasitical, parasite stuff and a lot of flies. So it's really important to keep their area where they live and eat um, <laughs> every day, every morning. After I've given them um, each uh, two pounds of grain, I come in here and I will grab two flecks of their third cut hay. Some people buy first cut for their horses, second cut, and third cut. Um, this is last year's third cut. I got a good deal on it, so um, it's just kind of, I'm feeding them this besides them going out on pasture. Um, and they would rather have pasture, but they still need to have a little extra um, hay to eat. So I'm going to give them each just a small um, bundle. I'm going to go grab one. I would give them probably twice as much as this, especially in the winter, so they can stay warm, because that's how horses stay warm in the winter, is by eating. And then in the summer, when it's hot, you know, a lot of this is made of water, moisture, so 
they also still need to eat throughout the summer just as much because they need to stay hydrated. But I always make sure they have fresh water every day. As you can see, they have some inside their lean-to and outside. So when they're done with their grain, they'll come out and probably nibble on that. I'm going to go inside here now and I'm going to open up the other gate so they can go out back when they're ready. I'm also going to check and make sure Ruby isn't eating Kate's grain. They're doing pretty good. So. Well, the next thing I probably would do while I'm waiting for them to finish that is um, I'm going to grab my pitchfork and my wheelbarrow and I'm going to get those three piles of manure out of the lean-to area. good compost but it usually has to sit somewhere in the sun for about six months before it's considered um, good for plants otherwise you'll have way too many um, weeds but you also can make um, manure tea where you can put manure inside of a wheelbarrow like this or a bucket of some kind and you fill it with water and you can use it to um, water your vegetable plants and flowers for a fertilizer. I put down cedar shavings and it makes it easier to clean up. So I do this every day. Winter's a little bit different. You don't have to worry about parasites as much in the winter unless it's freezing. And the horses actually do really well out here in the winter. Um, this is enough protection for them. You know, they are wild. They're supposed to be wild animals, so. A lot of people will stable their horses and keep them out of the cold, but you know, if it gets really cold and if it's an icy rain, I always put blankets on them because that's kind of a hard thing for them to deal with. But they do have protection. They've got water. They just don't have heat, except for their winter coats they put on and um, any kind of a extra blanket I put on them. So, I mean, as you can see, it takes a lot of um, responsibility and commitment, really, to care for horses because it's a daily thing. They each will uh, take a, you know, manure dump out here, about eight, eight piles each. And uh, one horse will eliminate nine tons of manure a year. Nine tons. <clears throat> so that's a lot of manure. <laughs> Somebody has to pick it up. So Kate is 23 years old. She's a Polish Arabian mare with uh, some saddle bread in her. And uh, the other horse is a three-year-old mare, and she's a paint. They're both from really good bloodlines. Temperaments are good. Um, they both uh, are very rideable. Um, Kate was bred and 
broke for west like a western pleasure seat um the paint really could do just about anything she's a pretty good hardy good size horse so she really could do anything from uh gosh you know she could be in uh do western stuff she could do english dressage she could probably pull a cart or buggy so um kate's a little bit smaller the older mare smaller than her so the horses can live until they're almost 30 and beyond um oh hi yes you are so friendly aren't you ruby um and you know, just grooming, brushing, grooming, you know, I don't over bathe them. These guys are outside a lot. They get plenty of exercise because there's about four or five acres of pasture back there. So. But this horse is really personable for a three-year-old and she's not uh, aggressive. Hey, you want a hug? Alright, I'll give you a hug. I'll give you a hug. Oh, that's a nice hug. Maybe. So, when I was about 15, I started riding. But, um, I stopped for many years. And then, when I was in my late 30s, I decided to buy Kate. And she was three then. Now she's 23, like I said. Um, <clears throat> I had a spinal column injury in 2015 and I have not rid I haven't ridden my horse since then and I'm not really riding her now <clears throat> um, but I enjoy caring for them um, I actually did loan her out and give her to my niece and um, she just wasn't doing very well where she was at so I had her come back here and she's put on some weight and looks really healthy for a 23 year old and then the other horse is, is basically called a pasture mate. So even they need companionship. You know, they need um, to be with somebody else, another, another horse or a pony or a goat. Um, it usually works best to have them in pairs um, because they're social animals and they're pack animals, um, just like us human beings. So. When I wake up at 6.37 every morning, I have purpose. I come out here and they need fresh water and grain and, and good food. And it makes my heart feel good that I'm caring for them. And it's really like a type of equine therapy for me at this point in my life. And I'm really enjoying it.